Dear friends, I am so overjoyed and thrilled and honored to invite you on 40 Days, 40 Nights, the prayer journey of the soul. And I've chosen to unroll this prayer journey during Lent because that's the traditional Christian time that people prepare their whole being to receive the agony and the ecstasy and the glory and the revelation of Easter. I think of this period in a universal evolutionary mystical way. So it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or a Buddhist, how wonderful before spring arrives with its promise of new life to prepare yourself, body, heart, mind, and soul to receive that new life and incarnate it with vigor and passion and compassion and a resolute new determination to pour out your gifts in service to this burning, tragic, crazy, but transforming world. What I have chosen to do is to share with you 40 of the most potent prayers, short prayers, from the various mystical traditions. And this passion to share these short prayers was born in me a long time ago, because 30 years ago, I began to collect from all of the traditions that I was initiated into, the prayers that made the most profound sense to me. And I collected them together, as many of you know, in a universal mystical prayer Bible called Light the Flame, which came out in 2013. And I would like to read to you my short introduction to that book, because it will give you a very deep sense of why short prayers prayed with intense truth and intense devotion can be so valuable in our chaotic and hurried and stressed world. So here it is. In prayer, we open the whole of our being to God. We go beyond all the limited processes of the rational mind and open ourselves to the one to which all words and thoughts are pointing. This is not easy, but through deep devotion and self-surrender over time, we uncover the mystery of a non-dual, infinitely loving relationship with the divine that initiates us into what Jesus called the peace beyond understanding. My book, Like the Flame, has been designed specifically for our time in three ways. And this applies to the prayer journey that I have opened up to you. First, it draws on the wisdom and truth of all of the mystical traditions. We are witnessing the birth of a universal mysticism in which all of the different ways of loving God and the creation are celebrated. And in my life, I've had the grace and privilege of being initiated into many of these mystical traditions. This has given my prayer life a multifaceted and exhilarating wealth of richness and emotion. And I want to share this wealth with you so that in whatever tradition you find yourself, you can also be inspired by the joy and wisdom of other great visions of the divine. Look, it's so important at this moment that this universal mysticism is being born to take the kind of journey that I'm offering, because whatever tradition you are in, you can learn so much from the others, how to deepen your own devotion. Secondly, the prayers are short. This is for two reasons. I myself have found that repeating shorter prayers has an enormous power to open a door between the human and the divine. I also know that we are all under tremendous pressure. We live in a world addicted to hurry and distraction. So using short prayers devotedly and repeatedly over the course of our hurried days is a practical way to keep the compass of our being turned to the true north of the beloved. Short prayers are the skinny. And if you get the skinny and concentrate on the skinny, the skinny will get you to the skinny. Third, the world is in terrible crisis. 
which demands of us all an unprecedented allegiance to inner transformation and a commitment to sacredly inspired action. We must truly ground our lives in the divine presence, however we understand it. And all the mystical traditions agree, my friends, that the shortest, clearest, most powerful way of grounding ourselves in the divine presence, and God do we need it as this world burns, is through prayer. St. Paul said, pray ceaselessly. And the best way to pray ceaselessly is to work with short prayers that galvanize your whole spiritual being. When I put the whole book together like the flame, I wanted to have four quotations about prayer that really deeply sum up its magnificence and its power. And I wanted them to be from four different traditions so that you could have as comprehensive a teaching about prayer as possible, but through different lenses. So here they are. And the first one, comes from someone whom I know we all revere and love, someone who has truly given us the way forward of nonviolent sacred activism, Mahatma Gandhi. And for obvious reasons, I think you will see, this quotation is one that I think we all need to take to heart. Prayer has saved my life. Without it, I should have been a lunatic long ago. I had my share of the bitterest public and private experiences. They threw me in temporary despair. And if I was able to get rid of that despair, it was because of prayer. I first discovered that quotation when I was going through my own terrifying and agonizing and absolutely exhausting dark night, which went on for 10 years. And the greatest gift that my dark night gave me was that it initiated me at a visceral level to the power of prayer. I discovered that when the dark night gets really brutal, and of course, as you know, it's getting brutal all over the world, and it will get more brutal because the mother is not going to relent until we're either transfigured or wiped off the face of the earth. One human species is ending and another is being born in immense chaos and pain and horror, but it is being born. And what I realized during that terrible time was that there were many, many days when I felt so broken, so shattered, so afflicted that I couldn't meditate. I couldn't calm my mind and I couldn't do any elaborate practices, even the ones that I loved very much because I simply didn't have the soul energy. But what I found I always had the energy for was prayer. And the prayer, in fact, that I chose to repeat sometimes for weeks on end ceaselessly to keep myself encouraged, empowered, aligned as my world burned around me was the rosary, was the Hail Mary. And what I discovered through praying incessantly, incessantly, incessantly was that I was able to stay in my innermost core, however the rest of me was being battered and destroyed through prayer. And this is the deepest reason why I'm offering this 40 days and 40 nights at this time. The times are terrible now and they will be terrible for a while because immense changes are afoot. And an immense birthing process is being undertaken at this moment, a birthing process that arises out of a great death. And the way to stay aligned with the birth is to pray. Whatever happens, however you feel, you can still pray. And when you summon up the tender devotion and passionate energy to pray a short prayer, 
you will discover it aligns you immediately with your deepest self. The second quotation comes from a very great Christian mystic, one of the great wild women who so adorn Christian mysticism, Mechthild of Magdeburg. And this quotation, these two paragraphs, listen carefully, they sum up in the most glorious language, the power of prayer to transform darkness into light, pain into joy, horror into peace. Listen, she knows what she's speaking of. And through that terrible dark night that I went through, I began to learn the truth of what Mechtild is saying. So here it is. That prayer has great power, which a human being makes with all his or her might. It makes a sour heart sweet, a sad heart joyful, a poor heart rich, a fooling heart wise, a shrinking heart brave, a sick heart well, a blind heart full of sight, a frozen heart ardent. It draws down the great God into the tiny heart. It drives the famished soul up into the fullness of God. It brings together two lovers, God and the soul, in a sublime place where they speak long of love. <laughs> God, so sublimely beautiful and so accurate. And I just want to repeat that second paragraph because it's my deepest hope for you that this will become real, actual, visceral for you as you undertake this journey with me. It draws down the great God into the tiny heart. It drives the famished soul up into the fullness of God. It brings together two lovers, God and the soul, in a sublime place where they speak long of love. And that last sentence is so important because for me and for all evolutionary mystics, Prayer is the way in which we turn up in the beloved, beloved relationship. By praying, we open our hearts in love and passionate devotion and trust and surrender to the one that is already showering us with grace and with love. And through that act, to sublime lovers, God and the soul come together and speak without words, long of love. How sublime and amazing. And here is the third quotation, which is very important to grasp. And it comes from Black Elk. It comes from the core of the indigenous traditions. The great spirit is everywhere. The great spirit hears whatever is in our minds and hearts. And it is not necessary to speak to the great spirit in a loud voice. Why I love that quotation is that it says to us, look, wherever you are, God is with you and in you. You can speak directly to the divine presence that lives in you and in everything around you. You don't have to be speaking in a grand, loud voice. You must speak intimately. You're so loved, you're turning up to meet your beloved. Speak intimately speak from the intimate core of your whole being and over time you come to deepen immeasurably 
your relationship with God so that it can be revealed to you that you're a hologram of God, a, a, a light drop in a great, vast, pulsing, vibrant ocean of light. And here's the fourth quotation, which is why we pray. And it comes from the great Sufi tradition, the tradition of the passionate lovers of God. It's written by an amazing Sufi sheikh called Sheikh Ansari, 16th century, astonishing mystic. And oh, I have always loved this prayer deeply because it sums up why we take this journey to prepare ourselves for the spring of the resurrection, or if you don't like that language, for the spring that offers us an embodied divine life from which we can truly rise in joy and peace and passion to serve the world. So listen. Oh Lord, give me a heart. I can pour out in thanksgiving. Give me life so I can spend it working for the salvation of this world. So when you bring together Mahatma Gandhi talking about how prayer got him through the blazing dark night of his long passion to unseat the British Empire and bring in authentic Indian democracy, when you bring that together with that revelation from the depths of her mystical experience that Mechthild offers us of how prayer can transform the darkest shadows into the most empowering lights and how it can open up an exquisite and wordless and boundless relationship with the beloved as a part of the beloved. When you bring those together with Black Elk's very sober, very precise statement about the presence being everywhere and knowing what's in our hearts and minds and inviting us to speak to it with the intimacy of beloved with beloved. When you bring together those three with that prayer of Ansari, give me life so I can spend it working for the salvation of the world you have the real, rich, deep, complete map to why taking this journey of 40 days and 40 nights at this particular time in the world's history and in America's history and in the history of our relationship to nature could be so splendidly empowering for you and for us all. I love you. I hope that you will join me on this tremendous journey. And I hope that you too will discover what Gandhi and Mechthild and Black Elk and Ansari and all the mystics who have loved and adored prayer discover. What a wonderful and sublime gift to yourself that would be and how marvelously it would prepare you for the spring of the birth of a new world.